What's going on everybody? Welcome back. We're at it again with another video. This one is going to show you how we bonded a dorsal fin onto my store WF1. Now I'm sure some people are probably wondering why bother to put a dorsal fin onto your race car? Well, there's two reasons. The first one, the obvious one, is it provides lateral stability. So let's say I get snap over steer in the middle of something. It's going to help push the car back in line and get the car upright and straight. That's helpful. Not necessarily mandatory, but it's helpful. The other thing is, well, it's tied to this. So you see how most of the string was going straight? That's what you want. You want to make sure that the air is flowing smoothly over the skin of your race car. We'll call it the boundary layer. There was a couple of wiggly strings in there, but realistically, a lot of really straight lateral air movement. Now watch this. Yuck, right? That is a lot of turbulence, a lot of chaotic air. So what I'm hoping is the dorsal fin is at least gonna be able to help clear up or clean up the airflow coming over the back of the engine cowl and make that at least a lot less turbulent than it is right now. So I should probably give you guys a little bit of a parts list as to what we consumed in order to make this dorsal fin work. We used a two foot by four foot sheet of carbon fiber that was an eighth inch thick. We just ordered that offline. We ordered off the Loctite adhesive that TJ recommended, and we're obviously gonna default to what TJ likes to work with. We used peel ply, we used acetone, we used you know mixing buckets, sticks, paint brushes, and we used uh, Bondo spreaders. Beyond that, we had the two or three inch thick roll of carbon fiber, and that's about it. Oh, and the wood. We used a couple of two by sixes and a big three quarter inch thick piece of plywood. But enough about why and what we're doing, let's just get straight into it. So to start any job like this, you first have to identify where you're gonna put it. So that's what TJ and I are working on first. We're gonna identify a center line and then we're gonna make a template. Now we had to get a little crafty to make this template, but it ended up working out really, really well. As you'll see, we didn't have to do any real second cuts to this piece of cardboard. We nailed it on the first try. So one thing about this project is I get to take a back seat. TJ did a year stint working in the composites portion of Chip Ganassi's IndyCar program. So he's gonna be doing most of the heavy lifting when it comes to getting this dorsal fin installed on my store. So that means I just need to help him glue stuff onto my car and make sure I can make a jig that will hold the dorsal fin in place. As you can see, we decided to go with a diagonal down just so we can hold the dorsal fin closest to the bodywork making sure that we could true the line there rather than having to worry about it having any kind of bow on that top edge. And you can see how close we actually got this gap to come. Now, obviously we get to do a little montage of TJ working here. The one thing you'll notice is we actually ended up doing three keyways. So my dorsal fin will stick through my bodywork in three specific locations. This A added strength to the bonding process we were doing, but it also didn't really make the engine cover structurally weaker by cutting a giant slit in it. So you can see here, this is the peel ply and the prep work we did to make sure we could bond to the bottom of that engine cover. Now we're mixing up some of that Loctite adhesive and we're gonna make sure we fill those crevices so it seals the part because we obviously cut three channels into it and we don't want debris, water, or anything working its way into the entirety of my engine shell. Anybody that's gotten water inside a carbon fiber piece knows what I'm talking about. I was also thrilled with how much working time we had with this epoxy. We didn't have to rush anything, even though it was cold, and we felt like we were able to properly secure the part and locate it, and it took about a day and a half for it to dry. 
Now you can see here, this is how we're gonna be dropping it into the clamshell and squeezing it tight. From here, we were just simply tapping it up and down and left and right, trying to get it to locate, and it ended up bonding in beautifully. Now TJ recommended we put peel ply over everything, and it did end up working out brilliantly because what it allowed us to do is go straight from the epoxy right into putting carbon fiber on. After a day and a half of drying, we get to peel off the peel ply. And now I'm too excited. I'm going to go check it out and put it on the back of my car. So now that I got the tail on the car, it looks even better in person. Yeah, we're gonna be putting carbon fiber over here, so you're not gonna notice all of this gray here. We've also got some trimming to do because clearly the fin sticks up too high, but realistically, I can't believe we ended up with such a good looking fin and it's really, really properly vertical. Normally it's pretty easy to get this to bow left or right, but with TJ and I, we talked about it. That's why we started with the adhesive. Normally when you do carbon work, you end up putting a lot of heat with the epoxies or the resins that basically will tend to bow the part, right? So what we ended up with was we started with a low temperature epoxy and we're gonna go ahead and apply the carbon fiber and resin over the epoxy that's already properly holding the part in place. Therefore, hopefully when we go to put the carbon mat and resin onto the seam, we will not end up bowing my dorsal fin. So on to another new day, and today is the day where we get to put on some carbon fiber. So TJ, yes. now that the mold is working, we're prepping the underside here for carbon first. Yes, sir. Then we're gonna prep the top, right? You could say more than that on camera, you goof. Okay. You work for Ganassi after all, you're kind of a big fucking deal. <laughs> it's just YouTube, probably 50 people are gonna watch it, bro. No, dude, this, is, this shit's gonna blow up because this is gonna be the fastest store in the country. It's gonna blow up after the fact, so don't worry about it right now. All right. So I'm gonna to try to do this while TJ is working. This is really difficult for me to do because, well, I'm weird. But we've got everything laid out. We've got six strips, so three per side for the main outside of the dorsal fin. But we've also got two strips per rib that we're gonna put on underneath. So it's time to get started mixing up the epoxy and this stuff gets gooey. Now we're gonna start with the internal ribs. Again, we're gonna be applying two pieces to each internal rib, and then we're gonna to top it off by putting on some peel ply. The peel ply isn't necessary, but boy, does it make the job easy, because what it does is it makes it so it bonds really well, gets out all the air bubbles, and to top that all off, if you wanna work it and refinish it after it's dried, it's so much easier to work. Now TJ mixed in something into the resin that thickened it, plus he also dyed it. So that made sure that it didn't just stand out against the carbon fiber we were putting on. Now I'm just working on wetting the six ribs we're gonna put on, and then we just kinda had a conveyor belt going where I was just constantly feeding TJ these ribs. I'll have to apologize about the light. I don't know what the heck's going on with that LED bulb, but we'll deal with it. But as you can see, TJ worked pretty darn diligently to make sure that we were putting these strips of carbon fiber in the right place. Again, we're doing three per side and then we're gonna cover it in peel ply and we let it sit for another day and a half after that. Typically, you don't have to let it sit this long, but boy, has it been cold out here in the Bay Area. So we just decided to give it a little bit more time just to properly adhere itself. 
One of the things you're not gonna see is as we're going, TJ is constantly cleaning up any kind of excess with acetone. It was one of the things I kind of saw him doing along the way that just made so much sense. That and constantly using the paintbrush to try to get all of the air out, whether it be just patting the carbon fiber layers or even patting the backside of peel ply. It amazed me how much air that pulled out of all the layers we were going and how clean these fillets turned out when it dried. So here's about the only job TJ felt I was qualified to do is help him lay down the peel ply, but you can see he's frantically going at it with the paintbrush. All right, everyone, we're back at the shop. Today is the day where we get to see how good the carbon fiber bonding did or went on my dorsal fin. So let's check that out. So this looks brilliant, but we're also in low light. So I'm gonna sneak it over back to the other side of the shop and put it back on my car. So besides some trimming and some sanding, this fin is done and dusted. It is officially bonded and installed onto my store WF1. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you're interested in seeing more, hit the subscribe button. Until next time, have a great night.